Panini still sucks, and today I'm going to tell you exactly why that is still the case. Now, this is in relation to a group breaker, Run Good Life, who busted open a box of impeccable NFL first off the line, and essentially got gypped with regards to the hits in that box. Now, I'll take you to their Twitter page. This is from the last 24 to 48 hours. Essentially, they said they busted it open. Basically, only got one you know, of the silver autos in there, the silver bar autos, and then seven numbered base cards. So basically, there's eight or nine cards in this pack. You meant to get a certain number of autos. They only got one and got gypped pretty hard. Now, a lot of the people in the comments of this are basically saying, mate, well, what do you expect? The autos are not guaranteed. Now, I'm going to talk to that in a minute, but I'll also talk to why Panini's done wrong here and why this is not good enough in, in the current market of the hobby. And to give you some context, Panini, you know, to sort of cut costs as all trading card manufacturers do, they'll say hits are essentially on average per box rather than guaranteeing them per box because... Number one, that helps them sort of spread out the cost of those boxes and make it a bit more affordable for them to produce and then in turn a bit cheaper for customers, i.e. if you're not guaranteeing a certain number of autos per box per case, it means you can put some in there that have, you know, cheaper cards, i.e. cards that don't have autographs on them, and you can sort of lower the cost of the production of that, right? The second point being, from a manufacturing perspective, they'd probably have to invest a little bit more in terms of controls and reviews and things like that to make sure that every box was in fact getting the certain number or the correct amount of autographs. So that's their logic. But in my opinion, in the current market, as I very quickly touched on, that is not good enough. Now, to give you some context, um, Impeccable Football for 2022 is meant to have five or six autographs per box and then at least two or three base parallels. So you're not guaranteeing these autos, right? But you should be expecting at least five or six, maybe a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, depending on how lucky you are with your box. So a lot of people in the comments of this you know, thread are basically saying, well, it's on average, what are you complaining about? You shouldn't have paid that much for the box in the first place. But that's that's not the point here, right? You, you can get angry at Panini and also feel a bit aggrieved for this person, right? Like you can do them both at the same time. Panini, isn't, this is not good enough. And some of you, again, might be saying, well, it's on average, what do you expect? Well, I expect Panini to be doing a lot better when you're charging customers this amount of money for a premier product, right? Impeccable is one of their top line products. You can understand them having, you know, non-guarantees on the more affordable stuff, right? Like hobby for Prism and things like that. But things like this, where you're charging, you know, upwards of $1,500, for, especially for first of the line, which is a bit more expensive, right? And, and you've only got nine cards in that in that box. To not get anywhere near close, you know, the guaranteed or the expected number of orders, I shouldn't say guaranteed, sorry, is not good enough. And the sort of writing on the coattails of what they've done 10, 15 years ago, I say this all the time, right? I work in external audit, so... When I look at these business processes of these trading card companies, I can easily spot very clear mistakes they're doing or areas they're not doing good enough in because I, I stare at basically business processes and reviews and policies and procedures day in, day out. I work at one of the largest financial institutions in the world, so I see it firsthand at the top end of, of town, right? And for these guys not to be having some basic functionality there is very disappointing to say. I call it that all the time. And the reason why I flagged that just now is because Panini sort of got away with doing this, you know, 10, 15 years ago because the hobby... Yes, it was always, you know, quite, you know, productive and made good revenue for them, but the actual box of cards weren't that expensive. In Select 2013, I talk about it all the time, it's my favorite set. You could buy that box for about $200 Australian, which is, you know, peanuts, which around the time was around 150 US. So them being able to produce something that cheap and then to not have the guarantees in there because I got gypped a couple of times with that product getting no autos and no swatches, you'd be like, okay, well, I only paid $150, $200, who cares? And Panini was a little bit also easier to get in touch with back then as well. But now you've got instances where they're charging you $1,000, but they've kept their risk appetite. They've kept their business process the same as it was 10 years ago. They're like, okay, we can't invest the time. We can't invest the money to make sure the QC is correct to make sure there's a certain number of autos in every box, which is why we're not going to guarantee everything. But even for this premier product, we, we just don't really care, right? It just makes it more affordable, so on and so forth. It's like, okay, that's not good enough anymore, Panini. You know, 10, 15 years ago, boxes were one-tenth of what they are now, if not less, right? You're talking a bigger multiple. Boxes are so much more expensive. If you want to charge people this amount of money, you sort of need to uplift, you know, your business process, your reviews, your policies, your procedures to match now the new revenue that you can generate as a business. And it's very clear based on the mistakes they've made, based on the mistakes PSA has made, based on the mistakes BBC has made, as I say continuously on this channel, these businesses have been too happy to take in more money from you as a customer, but not uplift and give you a better product as a customer. This kind of mistake here within this product, right? Impeccable. Yes, it's not guaranteed, but that's besides the point. You should be expecting to get a little bit closer to the five or six autos per box, right? Not zero. 
They got one of the silver bar autos, but those are guaranteed if I remember correctly. So they got zero based on the rest of the autos. That's that's not good enough. And it's a premier product. Again, I'm not sure if I already said, you can sort of understand them doing it for things that are a little bit more affordable, like Select, like Hoops as an example. But for Impeccable, for NT, for Eminence, can you imagine paying that kind of money for a box and not getting something like this to this level? Not even like anywhere close to the guaranteed autos or the autos they're advertising going to be within that product. It's just, it's just utterly ridiculous. And it, it just really annoys me how these businesses have continued to sort of get away with stuff like this because people don't speak up enough. People are still going to run out and buy this product and nothing's really going to change. And from Panini's perspective, they're just going to keep doing it. When Fanatics come in, don't expect them to do any better than this, right? Because the hobby, the community, the customer base does not have an appetite for them to be better, right? Because they're still going to happily buy it. But that's the point I'm trying to get across to you all. Just look at what they're doing to you. Look at what they're offering to you as a customer. It is no different to what they were offering five, 10 years ago, yet they're charging you an arm and a leg more. It's not good enough. I cannot emphasize that enough. Their risks, their risk appetite, their control framework, their control environment, their business process, their reviews, their policies, their procedures, all these things that are part of my BAE work that might be going over your head right now are nowhere near good enough for the amount of money they're charging. It's just utterly ridiculous. They're taking you all for a ride. They're charging you $1,500 USD for that box of cards and they're making that kind of mistake, that QC is so poor. And like I touched on, they sort of do it to make the cost come down, right? Because if they put less autos in less boxes, it means they've got more autos on hand to sort of put into other product, right? Especially if it's sticker autos, right? They can pay the player once and use that in multiple products. It makes it easier for them to distribute it, right? But guys, you're not charging peanuts for boxes anymore. And that's the point I'm trying to make. You're not charging $200 for a box, it's $1,500 USD. Surely when you're charging that $1,500 USD, you can afford to make sure there's a guarantee in your premier products. Even if it only makes it slightly more expensive per product when really it shouldn't at all because you're already charging a ridiculous price compared to what you used to, but at least do that for this premier stuff. Like it's a high-end product, it's not good enough. And even from a QC perspective, you're generating enough money these days. Like you're charging customers so much more, right? Across the whole hobby, across the whole industry. And you're not uplifting your processes to make sure that a QC error like this does not fall through. Like it's just, it's just crap. It's dog shit. And there's no other way to say it, right? And it's just very, very disappointing to say. I just can't emphasize that enough. They're charging you so much freaking money and they're not willing to uplift their process to make it better for you. And it's like, okay, when's it going to change? I don't expect it to change. But the, the key message here is when you see things like this, call it out. And again, Panini's not going to reply to this. I, I, I don't think they will. It'd be good if someone like Sports Card Radio sees this because they've got a really, really bad, big you know, following and they've got 20,000 subs, right? And 20,000 subs is not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but they've got something that's really powerful right now. And that is the people power, right? People see that, they talk about it, they watch their videos, they consume their content really, really well. People that are high end within the hobby in terms of, you know, CEOs and things like that, watch their content and have replied to their content. We need someone like them to call this out because that's the only way you're sort of going to get tangible change. Where's this change going to come from? Is Fnatic's going to be better? I don't know. So Please share your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I'm pretty sure I made all the points that I wanted to. It looks like Rungle Life is trying to get in touch with me. Um, somebody reached out on a comment down in YouTube. So if they do reply and want me to call out something specifically, I will talk about it in an updated video tomorrow or later today, depending on when they come back to me. But again, it's just utterly ridiculous. It's not guaranteed. So some of you might say, like I said at the very start, who cares? It's not guaranteed. You sort of get what you sort of, you, you expect for something like this to happen eventually, right? Okay, that's probably a fair statement to make, but guys, it's not good enough when you're charging that kind of money. Panini, right? You're making a lot more money than you were, you know, five, 10 years ago. I'm sure athletes are not expecting to be charged any more money than they were five, 10 years ago to the level of multiples than what you're charging your boxes, i.e. I'm sure the, the, the spread from charging $200 a box to now charging $1,500 a box, you're not seeing that same growth, that same multiple applied to what, you know, athletes want to be charged for a signing fee. I guarantee you that's not the same multiple. So where are you? Are you where, where are you spending your money to basically make sure you're giving a better offering to your customers? I don't think you are. So that's it for today. Like I said, please share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've seen this in anything else in other products lately, again, it's utterly ridiculous, especially for first of the line guys. Come on, what are you, what are you doing? So that's sort of it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.